What's up, everyone? Aaron Negler here with your Packers Daily Chat live on Cheesehead TV. Wherever you are in the world, that's where we want to be. We're devoted to you, Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Hello, Alan. You are indeed first. Well done. Uh, 17 days, 17 days until training camp. Can you believe it? We're almost there, but a little over two weeks to go. Obviously, we'll first have the shareholders meeting, um, and then two days of non-padded practice, which is basically an extension of the OTAs and mini camps. And then, then the Packers will don the pads and the real fun will begin. Good to see everybody. Adam stays to training camp. Uh, made it live. What's up? Thanks for joining us live. Try to, um, you know, get mix it up with you guys live a few times a week during the off season. We'll be back every single day during the season. Uh, lots of fun stuff coming to you from Cheesehead TV, and I'll just give you a little taste. I still I can't completely announce everything we're going to be doing, but I will I will let you know that you'll be hearing from Cheesehead TV. A lot of different places around the state of Wisconsin, including on game days. Um, what does that mean? Stay tuned. Maybe you'll see something announced on Cheesehead TV either later tonight or later this week. It's going to be exciting stuff. It's going to be fun times. Normally in Sweden, today in Munchen, Germany. Is that Munich or real Munchen? What's up, Adam? Thanks for joining us. Uh, Katie says, I'm not comfortable with Jones doing Clubhouse Live. It's like the Madden curse. <laughs> Come on now. That's not true. Crabtree was great on Clubhouse Live. That's all I got. No, Bakhtiari was on Clubhouse Live, and he's an all-pro. Come on. Have some faith, Katie. Everything will be fine. I like their intro video. What, you were expecting the other Aaron? That was fun. It's good times. Uh, Packers sign another safety? Not yet. I think Ibrahim Campbell is the leader in the Clubhouse. Uh, if he makes it back from injury. Uh, expectations are high. I cannot wait for that Thursday night football opener. AJ, I hear you, man. In Chicago, it's going to be great. Can't wait. Cannot wait. But let's, let's get to camp first. I mean, a lot can happen in that uh, month-long stretch of training camp, no doubt about it. Do you see Rodgers having the same freedom, or does the coach rein him in? A bit of both, Frank, actually. Uh, a lot has been written and a lot has been said about um, you know, Rodgers' control of the line of scrimmage and what Lafleur's offense traditionally, obviously he's only called plays for one year, but out of the system he comes out of, what that means for the quarterback. I, I think ultimately it will be a marriage, and I think um, mostly it, this offense will operate as it's designed to, but... As LaFleur has stated, if Aaron Rodgers comes to the line of scrimmage and sees something that he can take advantage of or knows that the call that they have on or even the calls that they have on um, are probably a disaster waiting to happen given what he's reading across the line of scrimmage, he's going to be given the freedom to change and the freedom to try and take advantage of what he sees. So um, it'll be a work in progress. They will certainly try to work things out throughout training camp, but once the bullets get live in regular season, I'm sure it will continue to develop. But uh, you don't get to the point where Aaron Rodgers is and then completely shut down everything he's learned uh, and his ability at the line of scrimmage. That would be foolish, and I don't think Lafleur is foolish. Do I think Lafleur will have any trick plays? I mean, no more so than most people. Um, I think it'll feel probably like there are more tricks up his sleeve compared to Mike McCarthy. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be uh, craziness. I don't think it's going to be anything approaching what we saw early on from Matt Nagy last year. Um, but I do think it will, he'll, he'll use a lot of misdirection. Uh, he'll try to take advantage of um, tendencies from the opponent with some trickeration, so to speak. But I don't think it'll be anything out of the ordinary for the normal realm of the NFL. Oh, Bruce, thanks for checking out the Star Wars podcast. Thanks very much. They're a lot of fun to do. It's a good way for my daughter and I to kind of connect each week and talk about something we love, which is Star Wars. I read on Cheesy, Cheesehead TV that there are run plays for Jones and ones for Williams. If one of them gets hurt, does this limit the playbook? Not necessarily. And I, that's a pretty simplistic way of looking at it. Um, trying to distill the idea of 
Um, there are things that suit one of those backs better than the other. Um, doesn't mean that they're completely shut out of wanting, if they want to call those plays, when one of them gets hurt. Um, I don't doubt for a second that Jamal Williams can handle everything in the playbook, as can Aaron Jones. Um, it's just a question of, um, you know, these certain set of plays are much better suited for one back or the other, but they can still be productive with anybody back there. Hell, maybe even with the rookie Williams. We'll see. Um, well, that's an interesting take, Chase. Kaiser would have started a couple games at the end of last season without the impending coaching turnover. We might be looking at him a lot differently if that wasn't the case. Whoo, that's a bit of a leap for me. But you might be right. You could be right. Um, I haven't seen anything from him in his game, in his time in the NFL, to suggest that he's suddenly going to turn it around. However, the NFL is littered with surprises where guys struggle early on and get to a new coaching staff slash change of scenery, and all of a sudden the light comes on. A bit of experience. He's still extremely young, and he does have a new staff in place with a new offensive system. Maybe it helps him, especially with the kind of emphasis on the running game. Maybe that helps uh, take some of the pressure off of him. You know, McCarthy's system asks, asks a whole lot of the quarterback. Without that in his, uh, uh, on his plate, maybe that opens things up for the young man. And I certainly hope that's the case. No doubt about it. Uh, where can I catch the Star Wars pod? Chris, uh, check my Twitter account. Uh, I put it up pretty much uh, every week. Uh, it's on Anchor. It's on Google. It's on all the regular podcast places. It's called Nagler, A Star Wars Story. Ha <laughs> ha Frank, that's outstanding. If I'm the prince of tickets, who is my father? That would be Ticket King, who will be able to handle all your Packers tickets needs. They've been around since 1992. They're right across the street from Lambeau Field, but you can find them at cheeseheadtv.com if you're not in Green Bay. About halfway down the page, there's a link to Ticket King. If you want to go to a preseason game, a regular season game, hell, if things break right and they go to the postseason, they got that handled for you too. Ticket King for all your Packers tickets needs. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Frank. Do you see Gary more with his hand in the dirt or as more of an edge rusher? Uh, a bit of both. I don't think it, I think a lot of it will depend on where they uh, have the opposing offense. If they force them into a lot of third and longs, you're going to see them standing up a bit more. Um, I'm sorry, with his hand on the ground a bit more. Uh, but I do think he'll be an edge guy on early downs. Um, but all of that said, I do think he'll move up and down the front. Uh, but I think, at least initially, you will see him standing up on early slash rundowns. And then when it gets into third and long situations, obvious passing situations, maybe second and long, etc., they will kick him inside and let him pin his ears back and get after a guard or a center. Um, and I think, you know, a, a lot of that will be determined by what they feel are the best matchups and the best combinations of guys that they can use up front. That's why they went and got a guy like Zadarius Smith, who will be very similar in that regard. He'll be doing a lot of interior rushing on passing downs. So, um, you know, we'll see how it develops, and I don't doubt that they will mix and match as the year goes on, but predominantly I think that will be the plan. When will Corey do Brewers daily? That's amazing. Uh, Katie, no, I'm sorry, no 2XL shirts uh, on this initial run for the lot of ball game left shirts, of which they're flying off the shelves. Check them out at cheeseheadtv.com. Um, actually, we're out of mediums is the latest update. Uh, but I'm sorry, no 2XLs this time around. If they, you know, sell out and we feel it a prudent investment, maybe we'll do that on the next run. Cole, what's up? Thanks for checking in from Minnesota. Save for the Savage, what new addition to our defense are you most excited to see make an impact early? Outside of Savage, probably Zadarius Smith. Uh, like I just mentioned, his versatility, I think, is a real big key for Mike Pettin, uh, his ability to use a lot of different fronts, disguise, move them all over the place. Uh, he's the guy I think makes the most immediate impact, and that's not to say that other people won't. But to me, he's the number one guy to be looking for in that regard. Let's head over to Twitter, shall we? See what's going on in the old tweet machine. Matthew starts us off with, I saw your tweet about, he says, Amon, Amon Green's 98-yard TD. That was a freaking amazing day at Lambeau Field. 
Where do you rank Green as a running back all time in Green Bay? His fumbles really prevent me from taking him, making him top running back in history of the Packers. Thoughts? Matthew, for the most part, I agree. I, I think it's hard to say he's the best to ever do it for the green and gold. Uh, turnovers are always a killer, and he certainly had those issues early on. Now, obviously, he improved as his career went on. I would probably put Jim Taylor at number one. That's just me, and I'm an old school guy. He didn't have nearly the opportunity that Amon did. Um, just number of games, first of all. Uh, yeah, I, I think you know there's there's cases for lots of guys. Uh, whether you're going Middleton, whether you're going Levins, whether you're going whoever. But uh, I'd probably put Taylor at number one. I think Green's right there in the conversation, though. There's no doubt about it. And that run against Denver in that game, which helped uh, put the Packers into the playoffs, was just one of the greatest moments I've ever ever experienced at Lambeau Field. Will quarterback be a priority in next year's draft? In which round do you see them picking one? It's so far out. I mean, so much ball game left here. I would think they would start looking for a quarterback next year, yes. Uh, whether that's in the draft, whether they trade for somebody that has been drafted and is languishing on a bench somewhere, uh, I'm sure they will explore all avenues. But um, to pigeonhole a round, I mean, if they're serious about finding a successor for Aaron Rodgers... History would suggest they would need to look in the first round. Yes, there are outliers. You can point to the Russell Wilsons, the Tom Brady's of the world, but by and large, you want to look in the first round if you want to get an eventual starting quarterback. Again, it's not a tried and true rule. It doesn't mean it's good. it has to happen that way. But more often than not, that's what has to happen. Yo, Nags, do you think the Packers will bring back Nick Perry? Gaff, again, no, no, Gaff. Again, that's two in a row, Gaff. Two in a row. You know, the no cam only works, Gaff, if you're paying attention. Excuse me as I talk to my producer here for a second. Disappo I'm disappointed in you, Gaff. I'm so disappointed in you. Don't let it happen again. All right, let's head back over to the live chat. Uh, Anthony, has been, can't wait for training camp to arrive. It's already been a long summer. You got that right. Uh, Josh Jackson could prove to be really valuable given Kevin King's luck with injuries. What say you? Duke, that's a really good point. Uh, now, obviously, he has to improve his play on the field, but yes, absolutely. And that's you know partly why you make investments at uh, positions where you have to play a lot of guys, which you certainly do in the secondary at corner. You got... Well, lots of spread formations you're trying to defend. you got to get talent on the field. Um, I've been very, very bullish on Kevin King. I think he's going to stay healthy this year. I think he's going to ball out. That said, if he were to be hit again with the injury bug, uh, Josh Jackson, hopefully, his continued development, along with Tony Brown, don't forget him. Uh, I think both of those guys could step in and help um, in a big way. What are my thoughts on Edgar Bennett? Underappreciated. All-time mutter. Better coach than most people give him credit for. Those are my thoughts on Edgar Bennett. Do you see Rodgers trusting his receivers with more 50-50 balls this year and possibly more throwaways to avoid hits? Well, I mean, you can't get more throwaways than he had last year. That's simply impossible. I mean, maybe not impossible, but highly unlikely. Um, as far as trusting his receivers more, it's a possibility. I mean, those younger guys are a year older, but there's a lot of inexperience in that, that receiver core outside of Devontae Adams. Um, he sure seems to trust Geronimo Allison and uh, Jake Kumaro. Who knows what happens with EQ and MVS. Maybe that develops, but I don't think he's ever going to be a big-time 50-50 guy. I mean, even with Jimmy Graham, who was one of the best contested catchers, who was one of the best contested catchers coming into the season, Rodgers rarely got it to him uh, in those situations. And when he did try, he either they were either incomplete or, and or intercepted. So... I don't think it's ever going to be Roger's game, but maybe we see a little bit more of it this year. Uh, <laughs> my tub. My tub with the TJ Watt question. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end you. Do the, do the Packers field a competent special teams this year? Yes. Yes, they do. And, and I'm just here to tell you. 
It's not going to be world beaters. It's not going to be this amazing turnaround. It's not going to be incredible. And you're not going to be like, oh my gosh, what a turnaround. But it will be competent. That's all I can ask for in 2019. Do I think Gaff gets a special teams coordinator position before Ron Zook? I don't know, man. I don't know. Let me tell you. Ron Zook at least has like some pithy phrases, some fun anecdotes to tell at the podium. Gaff? Gaff's not hanging on by a whole heck of a lot right now. So we'll see. We'll see how he does. Hey, Aaron, outside of Adams and Allison, which of the three receivers from last year will make the most impact, in your opinion? MVS, EQ, or Whitewater Jesus? Scott, that's a hell of a question. Uh, I think it's MVS in a runaway. Um, I think EQ and uh, Kumaro will certainly contribute. But to me, MVS is ceiling, and I've talked about it a lot here. Um, it's just incredibly high. And I thought, if you haven't seen um, Brian Baldinger's breakdown that he did for NFL media, I, I encourage you to go check it out because it really kind of put film to what I've been talking about all summer in regards to, you see the flashes, you see how he's going to, the ability, the potential for him to really explode for the Packers. I think it's all there. He's the, he is the entire package. Does Josh Jones make the 53 or will the Packers trade him? Duke, that's a really good question. Uh, I would think they're going to trade him. But we'll see. Uh, deadline spur action and the deadline that you would think that they would have for moving him would be the start of camp. So that's 17 days. Uh, <laughs> this stream needs more airtime from Gaff. Let me tell you. Gaff may be, that may be his punishment from now on. When he misses the no cam, he's got to come out here and apologize. That, that may happen. If they can field a punt, I'm considering it a great special teams. Exactly, Julia. I mean, competence will be an amazing step forward for this unit. No question. Roger, Starr, and Favre walk into a bar. Which one do you talk to first? Well, Starr, because like that would be amazing to talk to someone from the other side. But regardless, they're all alive and in their heyday. Bart Starr, zero question. Remember when everyone thought that Kentrell Bryce was taking a step forward and would be a solid starter to begin the year? Good times. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I wrote about it, and I, I, I did a little bit of a film breakdown on Twitter year, a couple, like, think two years ago, where you saw the big hits, and you did see some promise from him, and you hoped that it would develop, um, and then he got injured that second year. And so you thought, okay, you know, the injury... Maybe he comes back from injury and really starts to develop. But in that little interim before he got hurt, you saw the, the ducking of the head, throwing of the shoulders, not wrapping up, going for the big hits and taking bad angles, etc. The suggestions were there that this wasn't possibly going to work. Uh, and then last year happened and it all fell apart. <laughs> You're better. You better be with Packer Man as your producer. Nice. Who is tight end two? Mercedes Lewis, for now. Travis, have you completed the bottle cap challenge or licked any ice cream yet? Travis, I don't go in for such shenanigans. I don't need cheap theatrics to sell my stream. Actually, that's a really good idea. I should, I should, do, I should get on these little internet uh, bandwagons. Maybe that would help our numbers. Maybe we'd get above 10,000 streams. I got 17 days, people. Get up to 10,000 subscribers on the Cheesehead TV YouTube channel. Make it happen. Be my apostles. Go forth and tell your friends. Subscribe to the Cheesehead TV YouTube page. Channel. Subscription. I need it. I need it. Blade Runner 2049. How many times did you see it? I'm going on 17. Awesome movie. Bruce, I saw it more than 20 times in the cinema, and I've seen it countless times at home. It is absolutely one of my favorite films of all time. I waited 30 years for it, and it did not disappoint. Does Trevor Davis have a chance to stick around due to his special teams experience and the fact that the coaching staff says he's showing up on the offense as well this year? Well, Alex, okay. Slow down on whatever the coaching staff says about him in the offseason. He's doing it in shorts, and that's when he shines. He always has. And then he disappears once the pads come on. Well, let's see what happens when the pads come on in training camp. In 17 days. Um, if he continues to make plays, then yes, I think his special teams ability earns him a spot on the roster. But if the pads come on and he completely disappears from scrimmage again, as he always has, then I think his, it's more of a long shot that he's on the 53. A lot to play out there. 
All right, everybody, I'm gonna have to jump. Thank you so much for all the questions. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to yours. They are greatly appreciated, as is your time, and you know, just the investment you make in Cheesehead TV as part of your Packers routine, especially here in the doldrums of the offseason. It really means a lot to us. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. You like us on Facebook. Uh, find us on Instagram. Hell, Twitter, we're live when we do these streams. Follow us on Twitter. And if you're so inclined, if you do like what we do here at Cheesehead TV, please find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Cheesehead TV. Uh, five bucks a month supports everything we do, and it is a lot, and there's going to be a lot more coming when the regular season starts. Be on the lookout. Announcement coming later this week. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good night.